In this problem, we're told an artificial satellite circling the Earth completes each orbit in 110 minutes. A, find the altitude of the satellite, and B, what is the value of G at the location of this satellite? So this right here is what's going on, right? So we have the satellite, it's circling around the Earth, right? And what we're trying to do for A is we're trying to find the altitude. And so the altitude is just the distance from the, uh, the surface of the Earth all the way to where it's at, right? So that's the distance of the altitude, right? But when we solve this, there's some things you need to keep in mind. Uh, what we're going to do is use an equation in this, right? And so... Uh, the equation we're going to use is this one right here, which is basically, we know we know it by uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation, which is basically t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over uh, g, which is just the gravitational constant, multiplied by the mass of the Earth, right? And then you multiply this whole thing by r cubed. And so this is just uh, one of the equations we're going to use, right? And so basically what it does, it relates the period, which we're given, with radius, uh, g, mass of the Earth, and a bunch of things, right? So this is the equation we're going to use to solve, right? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to find altitude, right? But we can't find altitude directly, so what we need to do is find something. Uh, what we're going to do is find the radius, and then notice what the radius is. If we have the radius, right, which is basically the distance from the center to the thing outside, right, where it's rotating this whole thing, right, it's going to be r minus re, that's going to be equal to the altitude, right? Because if we have one long distance, we subtract the part of it, and then we're going to get a. So when we solve this, we're solving it for r, which is this whole thing right here. And then we're going to have to sort of subtract the radius of the Earth, and then that's going to be able to give us a, right? So in order to solve this, there's like a few things you need to know. You need to know the radius of the Earth, right, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. That's just something you have to know. Uh, you need to know the mass of the Earth, because we're going to use it that in the equation, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then you need to know g, which is just the gravitational constant. It's just 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So those are just some numbers you need to know So uh, when we solve this, right? So keep in mind what we want to do. We're trying to find r first. So what we want to do is get this in terms of r. So what you can do is multiply both sides by g times me. Then you're going to divide by 4 pi, uh, 4 pi squared and then just take the cube root. So I'm actually not going to go through it, but uh, you should know how to manipulate this. But it's just going to, you're going to get uh, r equals, and then it's going to be t squared multiplied by g times the mass of the earth divided by 4 pi squared. And then this whole thing to the cube root, right? Because you got to get rid of the cube. So it's just to the 1 over 3. So if you just manipulate this and get it in terms of r, because we want it in terms of r, because that's what we're solving for, uh, you'll get this, right? So when we plug this in, we need to make sure, though, that the period is in seconds. So you have to convert this into seconds. So basically just do 110 minutes. We know there's 60 seconds for every minute. So just multiply it by 60. And when you do that, right, so take out your calculator and plug it in. So uh, 110 times 60 you're gonna get 6,000 uh, it's gonna be 6,000 uh, 600 seconds right so just keep that in mind 6,600 seconds uh, and yeah so now we can actually plug it in because it's in the correct units so all we have to do is just plug in the numbers so r equals uh, t squared so t squared 6,600 squared times g which is the gravitational constant 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 multiply by the mass of the earth Right, so basically whatever planet you're rotating around, in this case it's the Earth, right? So we just know what it is. So 5.98 uh, times 10 to the 24, and then you divide this by 4 pi squared, right? And then keep in mind this whole thing is to the one third. So when you go ahead and plug this in, so just basically plug this in your calculator. When you do that, you're going to get R equals 7.61 times 10 to the 6 meters. So about that, right? So this is going to be your radius, but keep in mind what we're trying to do is find the altitude. So we have to subtract the radius of the Earth, right? Because we just found this, this whole side. We got to subtract this to get this. So r minus re equals a. r is 7.61 times 10 to the 6th meters minus the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Right? And when you do that, you're going to get one point. You only have to subtract, uh, subtract these numbers because these are the same. So it's just going to be 1.23 times 10 to the, yeah, 1.23 times 10 to the 6, and then it's going to be meters, right? So this right here is going to be your uh, altitude, right? So this is your answer to A, your altitude. So now let's move on to B. So B. So what are we trying to do for B? We're trying to find the value of G at uh, the location of the satellite. So we're trying to find the gravity, right? So how do we do this? So for this one, uh, there's a few things you need to know. So uh, you need to know this formula right here, which is F sub G, which is basically the gravitational force acting on a satellite or an object like this, is F sub G equals G times ME, right? The object, MS, 
right, over r squared. So what is this? G is the gravitational constant. And these are your two objects. So this is the mass of the Earth and the mass of the satellite. So when you use this equation, you just use your two masses, and then you divide by r squared. Right, so you might be thinking we don't have ms, right? We don't have the mass of the satellite, but we're not going to need it, and you'll see why in a second. So we know that's going to be the force of gravity, but we also know the force of gravity, right, is just, uh, right, it's just the weight. So essentially, it's just going to be uh, ms, the mass of the satellite, times gravity, right? We know that. So both of these are the case, and if that's the case, right, what we can do is set them equal. And you'll see what happens when we set them equal. You're going to get ms times g equals g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by r squared. And so if we divide both sides by ms, what's going to happen is uh, they, they'll both cancel, right? So you, or you can just cancel, right? So these cancel, essentially. So you're just going to get g equals, right? So what we're solving for, g, is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by r squared. And so we know all these numbers, right? We just have to plug them in. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 multiplied by the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24. Right, and then divide that by the radius squared. So the radius we found was 7.61. Right, keep in mind it's the whole radius. So 7.61 times 10 to the sixth, and then we square that. So if you go ahead and plug this in your calculator, you're gonna get 6.89, and then the units are meters per second squared. So 6.89 meters per second squared. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be uh, the value of G at wherever the satellite's at, right? So at an altitude of this. But yeah, so this is your answer to B, this is your answer to A, and yeah, hopefully you found this useful.